Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'm Lee, and in this video, I'll show you how I painted Eric the Squire from Moonstone the Game. I got Eric in the starter set with these other Commonwealth humans, and you also get the four goblins as well. I'll show you how to paint all of those in other videos, but in this one, we're going to focus on Eric the Squire. And there he is, all primed with black and grey. And we're going to start by dry brushing on some two thin coats, white star paint. This is my favourite white paint. I think it's fantastic. And I'm going to use this very vegan makeup brush to apply it. It's got some really soft bristles there. Perfect for this. And I'm going to be loading up my brush with white paint, working as much as I can off the brush on a little bit of card. And then with downward strokes, I'm going to cover all the model with this dry brush technique. And doing this is really going to help the contrast paint and all the different layers of paint later on. So you're going to see some of the recesses being a little bit darker. The highlights are going to come through. So it really is a good idea to do this Zenital Prime step. And here he is now ready to start painting on all the different colours. And the first paint we're going to use in this step by step video is Layer Cadian Flesh Tone. This is a darker flesh tone and I've just watered it down a little bit. You're looking at about four parts paint to one part water and then that's just going to help it really go into the recesses, be easier to apply. And I'm just going to give this one nice coat over all the areas of flesh to the face and the arms. Let that completely dry, then take some Reichland Flesh Shade, this is the shade paint, and go over it all again, all those areas where you can see all the skin, really work it into the recesses and that's going to really make that shadow stand out nicely. Then we're going to move on to Contrast Militarum Green. I'm going to be using this for the trousers. I really like contrast paints. I think they're awesome for these kind of models with this level of detail, all the different textures. It works really well. And doing the Zenital Prime really helps to get the most out of these contrast paints. And the idea is to get the paint on the model, not too much, and push and pull it around with a brush until you've got a nice even coat. And then make sure you move the model rather than yourself so it's easier to get that brush in those hard to reach places. Places. The next paint is Contrast Snake Bite Leather, one of my favourites. I really love how this comes out. I'm going to be doing this on all the boots and be careful here if you're going in between these steps when the other paints are a little bit wet so that they don't go into each other because they will flood in and mix a little bit on the model. You could wait for each step to dry and the Contrast paints dry quite quick actually. But here you can see, again, I'm moving that model around, picking out all the different areas that I want this colour to go on taking my time, enjoying the process, and just having fun. It's a great model to paint. Next up is Contrast Saigor Brown, and this is going to go on the wooden sword. So he doesn't get a metal on this guy, he's just going to be armed with a wooden sword. Then Contrast Griffhound Orange, and I'm going to use this just to break up all the greens and browns. So I'm going to use that for the little patch that he's got on his right leg there. Then I'm going to take another favourite colour, Flesh Terror Red. This is a real rich colour, and I'm going to use this for the handles of the weapons. And I use this quite a lot on different weapons in all different games, but especially in Moonstone. Next, I chose Contrast Eandon Yellow, and this is going to be for his hair. I decided to go quite bright with this. You could use Agarus Dunes if you want something a bit more subdued, but I wanted a nice bright yellow head of hair for Eric, and I think this has just worked really nicely on its own. So I'm really happy with that. Then I took Contrast Plague Bearer Flesh. This is a really nice dirty green and this is going to go on his sleeves and his shirt so just again moving that model making it easier let the texture and all the contours of the model do the work for you then let's go back to militarum green and then i'm just going to pick out his headband so i like to the the trousers and the headband are the same color broken up by the colors in between then contrast agarus dunes so this is going to be the color you could have chose for the hair if you wanted to but i'm going to use this for his waistcoat and this is a nice creamy colour almost when you do it like this and then just pop that all over and then working it in I'm also going to put it on the little ropes that's holding that cup in place. Then Volupus Pink is next, another contrast and I'm just going to pick out his tongue so being very careful there. I don't mind if it goes in his mouth a little bit more but mainly I'm aiming for that tongue. Then layer Cajun flesh tone again and I've really watered this down a bit more now we're looking at three parts paint to one water and I'm going to pick out the most raised areas of all these fleshy areas and that's going to start our highlights to work. I'm being particularly careful now not to get it in the recesses because I want all that shade to come through from the different paints we put on earlier. Then when that's completely dry I took layer Kislev flesh and now I'm going to go one part 
kids their flesh to one part water so it's quite thin this and then really pick out those highlighted areas again but not as much this time so really going for the cheeks he's got some proper chubby cheeks this guy so you can really accentuate those and then pick out the nose as well so yeah the really the most highest points on the fleshy areas then it's time to do the metal work. So let's start with some base lead belcher. So anything that's metal now, I'm gonna paint with lead belcher. Give it a nice coat. I don't water this down, I'm using it straight out of the pot. Uh, some people water it down. I tend to just like it straight out of the pot like this. And I'm picking out little buckles, again, moving the model, making sure my arms are braced on the table. So I've got lots of control, I'm not shaking too much as I pick out these little bits. And then when I get to the big shield, you can really let loose and just give that one nice even coat all over, really working it in there. I'm just gonna cover this right in the recesses because we'll add some shade later on. Then I took some Retributor armor, another base paint. This is more of a gold one now, and I'm gonna pick out areas of the sword here that I want to be a little bit more fancy and just give that a nice even coat all over. Then also here at the bottom of the scabbard, you can just see a little bit that needs a bit of gold. And then just have a look around the model Make sure you, you're picking out all those bits and just adding things like that breaks it up a bit. When all your metal paints are completely dry, take some null oil and then give that a nice coat. This is gonna work into all those recesses, all the scratches on the shield, it's gonna soak in there and really pick those out so that they stand out and you can see them. Work it into the little helmet there on the handles as well to go over all the areas you did with lead belcher and the gold, but make sure they're completely dry first. Then it's back to two thin coats, white star paint, and I've wet this down one part paint to one part water. And this is gonna give me lots of control now as I start picking out these tiny details like his teeth. And I'm just trying to catch the teeth there rather than paint it in and fill in that black. I'm just kind of trying to catch it. Then it's on to paint the eyes. I'm not a big fan of doing this, it's very detailed, but if you get the model in a nice position, Get your arms braced on the table. I think you'll be fine. Get a nice tip to your brush as you roll it through the paint and twist it so that you haven't got too much paint on as well. But you don't want too little either. You want just the right amount to come off. And so once the eyes are done, I also picked out all the little stitches that go around this patch and then we'll pop another paint over that later on and that's gonna make those stand out a little bit too. Then it's on to contrast black Templar and make sure that white is completely dry because now it's time to pick out the pupils for Eric. I'm just trying to put a tiny dot so it's almost like he's looking up because he's leaning forward a little bit. And contrast paint's good for this because it's not going to go on too heavy. You've got to control because it's thin as well. And uh, yeah, very fiddly though. Now we're on to layer Stormhost Silver. This is a bright silver and this is going to be great to highlight not just the silver areas, but the gold ones too. And whenever I do the gold areas, I almost dot it on so it's not too much and then go a bit heavier on the larger areas of silver because uh, that can take a little bit more of this silver highlight. It's not gonna contrast as much as it does on the gold. And then that's the painting finished. So now it's time to do the bases. And if you'd like to see how I did the bases, then I'll link to a video at the end of this one that you can watch for Beaky Bobby, where I show you how I did that using all different flocks, this Vallejo mud as well, and the wild flower sets from Gamergrass. They really finish the bases off nicely. And you'll see, I also go around with some base Abaddon black and do all the rims of all the bases. And I give that two coats, do one, let it dry, then do another. And on the humans, I used a bit of milliput and just made some cobblestones, which I've covered in a separate video, actually, if you'd like to see that. But here he is. Here's Eric the Squire, all painted up. He's ready for battle now. And I've got to say, I really had fun painting this model. It took me by surprise. I didn't think I'd enjoy painting it as much as I did. It's so much texture. The details come through really well. And when you look at all the other humans that are included in the box, there's just so much going on here. Different colors, different techniques, this one was really fun to paint too, Flintlock. I loved all the different textures and the different colors for all the different materials he's wearing. All up, a great set of models in this starter set to paint up. Here's all four of the humans that come in that starter set and these are all gonna feature in other videos. You may have seen them in the how to play video already. And I've also painted up the goblins and I've done some how to paint videos for Doug the Flatcher and Beaky Bobby and Grub, so they're on the channel if you'd like to check those out too. And if you wanna follow along with this series that I'm doing for Moonstone now, it's so fun to be collaborating with them on this awesome series. I'm having a great time. And you can join in as well, because if you pick up the starter set, the main rule book, and the Rising book, 
before the end of September 2023, you can save 15% with them. And I'll put a link down below so you can make that saving, which is really awesome. If you'd like to see any of the other videos of the series, I'll link to the playlist at the end of this video. You can see the overview of what's going to be featured throughout the series. Look at the rule book in detail. Check out the different painting videos for Beaky Bobby, Pug and other models. And then also the how to play Moonstone video where I go through exactly how to get started playing the game. And then I'm going to be doing more reviews for different books and also going a bit deeper on some of the mechanics of the game with lots more examples and demo games as well. And coming very soon will be the tokens as I'll be unpacking these and giving you a close up look. These are really fancy. They really add to the game. And I think once you get started, you're going to want some of these because they're really nice. You get everything you need in the starter set. You don't have to have these, but I think it's nice to treat yourself. Huge thanks to Moonstone for collaborating on this series and sending out this starter set so I can share it with you. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think in the comments section down below. And if you did like the video, it'd be great if you hit the like button, subscribe for more Moonstone content like this. And I look forward to seeing you here next time on Tabletop Skirmish Games. Thank you so much to my Patreon supporters for helping me to keep going with these regular videos. I couldn't do this without you and I appreciate your support so much. If you'd like to join the Patreon community, support the channel, get some great perks at the same time, there's a link down below in the description. It'll be awesome to see you there.